Now let us see how to create a business role. Now, before we create a business role in access control, uh, we need to create a role naming convention for the business role also. Okay, if not, you can use a free, you know, because when you create, can create a business role, if there is no role naming convention, you can use a free text, okay? So, So you can use a free text, uh, but let's go and create a, a naming convention for um, business role also. So let's close this. We're going to come this come back again. Uh, let's go back, uh, go to the backend GRC system, and under uh, role management, specify naming convention, execute it, and now create a naming convention for business role also. Okay, so click on new entries. Um, this is the third the naming convention for business roles, right? So what is the role type this time? We are going to use business role. And in the connector group, you can pick the business role, okay? And you want to enforce it. Of course, save it. And now you can go and specify what the naming pattern for the business role is going to be. Okay, so let's go and create new entries. Say one, length, let's say three, because I want to use the role type as one, the attribute, okay? Or you can give it as a you know static text and then say BUS here. Okay, that one that also you can do. Let's take um, the second sequence, one character. We need to have a separator here. Let's go and select um, static text. And this time I want to use, so you used colon for single role and ampersand for the composite roles, right? So let's use greater than symbol here for indicating that this is a composite, uh, so this is a business rule. Okay, what's the next one? So now you have the separator. Now let's say you want to have, uh, let's say the business process, okay, which is two characters. Fourth, now you also want to have a separator after the business process. So it should be static text again. Okay, underscore, fifth. Now, now you want to have two characters from the business sub-process. Okay, so let's do that. Six, um, again, you need to have one separator. So let's put um, static test here again. And let's say underscore. And after that, you want to have a free text for renaming the business role. So at the maximum you can have uh, the length of a business role is 72 characters. So we occupied how many characters here? Three plus one, four, six, seven, nine and 10 characters. So seventh sequence, it should be 62. And this has to be a free text, right? Save it, enter key, and save. So don't worry, this underscores are disappearing, but in the role it will show up, okay? So let's save it. Go back, go back. So we created one more uh, our, our role naming convention for business role also. Now let's go back to our access control and now let's go and create a business role. Now business role is a container for all technical roles coming from different landscapes, okay, and different systems. Like ECC, BI, CRM, Solution Manager, s hana etc. So let's give a ticket number and say give a description, testing, business role. Okay, 
Now, if you see, this is a only the creation of business role is only a two-step process, two stages. Okay, two phases: define role and analyze risk analysis. Because analyze risk analysis, because it's going to contain technical roles coming from the uh, ECC ABAP systems, right? Uh, so, just analyze the risk. Now, business roles is automatically selected as an application type. In the landscape, let's select business roles. Now you see your name pattern is the same as what you have defined. Okay. Now, 62 characters for a role name is way too long. Uh, we could have reduced it to something lesser number length, but that's fine. The, the thing is this role is only going to exist in the BRM side. This role does not exist physically on the in the backend systems. So, okay, and plus it's like a composite role, um, except that, you know, this can contain any type of role coming from the backend system or any other systems, okay? It's so basically a container of, techni uh, of technical, container of technical roles coming from uh, various systems, okay? So click on business process, okay, so, all right. So let's see, select business process as finance. So if you see it got replaced here, it's a process. Let's say accounts payable, it's gone. And then project release. And as a free text, because it's 72 characters long, you can say testing business roles and this one okay so you're testing business role. you can save it and like the remaining roles you can go and start giving the properties okay set up set up the attributes the role attributes, critical level, you can say high, sensitivity, you can say normal, depending on your requirement. Click on save, functional area, uh, finance. Now based on the job title of the, you know, of the person, you can create a business role because if the person would need access to different systems and then you can combine the roles into a business role and make that assignment. Okay, so it, so business roles become, in BRM, it becomes a single repository of the roles, like, you know. Now, like I said, you know, this business role can contain composite roles also. Technically, in the ABAP system, you cannot assign a composite role in a composite role. Okay, so that's a, uh, limitation there but here there is no such a limitation you know we just simply assign whatever roles you want here okay click on save company and some of these attributes like I said they're not mandatory but for practice purposes I'm just going through this all the tabs and options as much as much as you can save it not doing custom so go to approvers. Click on add. Search. If I owner, and then you go to and assign the alternate owner also. It's basically the same steps that way you use for creating the single roles. The only Difference is the number of phases that you have here. In business role, you only have two. Okay, roles, prerequisites, depends on, okay, here, now you go and assign the roles. Okay, the roles that you want to assign. Now let's go and assign, okay, so let's go and assign the roles. Search. Now, keep in mind, you only get the roles that are in BRM, okay, you don't get the roles from the back end. So if you are 
if you want to create or you want to use the concept of business rules or the composite rules for that matter, right? All the rules that you want to use, you know, that are there in your backend systems, like ECC, BI, uh, SRM, CRM, Solution Manager, whatnot, all the rules that you want to use, they need to exist in the BRM side. Okay, here. Okay. So you, we will see how to bring in those rules. Okay. So in a couple of weeks, couple of uh, videos later. But here you only see the roles that are existing in the BRM system. Okay, these are not technically they are in the backend system too, but they were created via BRM. That's why you only see these roles. Okay, so we created these roles. So we have these roles in the backend also. Okay, but we don't see these roles here because we haven't synced up or brought in these roles into BRM from the backend system. Okay, so now let's go. So, what is the concept of BI, BI business roles that you can assign any technical role to it? The technical role could be a single role, it could be a derived role, it could be a composite role. Coming from ECC system, it could come from BI system, CRM, uh, CRM system, S4 HANA system. Okay, uh, so let's pick this is a composite role that we created. Select the role and it, you know, add, click on the add button here. Let's click on the derived role, right? And let's create, click on the single role. So we added a composite role, we added a derived role, and we added a, a parent role, okay? Uh, that's on the single role. So click on, so like this, you can go and add, adding from different uh, landscapes, okay? Different systems, basically. Can okay. So these roles are added. So it's composite role, single role, and derived role. We can save. That's it. Now, if there are any prerequisite requirements for assigning this role to users, then you should fill up the prerequisite um, tab also. Now, let's click on additional details. Now. Give a detailed description of the role. Right, save. Let's say provisioning. The status has to be in production. Okay, but if you want it to be assigned via user provisioning, save. Where used roles, assigned users, attachments. We know. Okay, we'll you know all of this. We have gone through this before. All right. Click on save and click on defend role so that you get save and continue button. Now click on save and continue to go to the next phase. Now you see depending on what roles you selected from which systems, right? Which uh, environments, BI, ECC and whatnot, you get the connectors here. Okay? The RFC connections or whatever you created for those systems. Now you have to run a risk analysis here also. Okay. So click on action level. And we know from our, because we know this, this, these roles have risks. Let's see what happens. Okay. Click on four count. Risk analysis performed successfully. Okay, now save and continue. And it's complete. So every single role that you create in BRM needs to be in complete status. Okay, let's, let's go and close. Now let's go and check if the business role is there. Right, so the business role is here and it's in complete status. Like I said, this does not exist in the backend system. Okay, because if you want, even if you want to search in the backend system, right, you don't have the business role option here. 
So let's go and check. Let's say BUS, right? That's how it started. See, it's not there. That single row in BUS. It's not there. So business roles exist only on the BRM side, not in the back end, uh, the back end plugin systems, basically. Okay? So this is how you create a business role. 